Well, it's time now for this pre-recorded version of McCoy, Heaston, and Smith, Attorneys at Law, here on WBRT Radio. And uh, with us is Chad McCoy from the law firm McCoy, Heaston, and Smith. Good morning, Chad. As we speak. Good, good morning. Good morning. Great yeah. to hear from you again. And I'm sorry that we're not uh, able to be face-to-face and see each other this time. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of that going around and going on. So, yeah, we'll... This, we're, it's become the new normal, that's for sure. All right. Our word of the week, actually, it's a term. It's business interruption insurance. We think of insurance in cars and life and health, but there is business interruption uh, available through uh, many, if not most, insurance agencies yeah, that absolutely. have commercial insurance. Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, interestingly, a lot of farmers are probably used to this kind of insurance, yeah. very similar to uh, crop, crop insurance, insurance or livestock yeah. insurance. Mm-hmm. Um, but But... This is one of those rare times, especially for Kentucky, you know, other than a tornado may be coming through, we, we generally don't get to rely or use the business interruption insurance, though most folks have it and pay for it. And, and basically what we're talking about is part of your coverage that says, look, if, if the revenue to your business has been interrupted because you can't get in there and do your work, you know, and let, let's take an easy example. Let's take a, the streets are flooded and closed and you can't get there. This is going to be coverage that would allow you to hopefully keep your business up and running, get, get payment in for your employees and, um, you know, be able to pay the mortgage and all the things that need to do to keep the business up and going. And maybe if you're even lucky enough to have it, uh, pay you your normal profits for the month as well if you're the business owner. So it, it's really good coverage to have anytime there is a disaster or some crazy event going on. There's discussion of this as it relates to the coronavirus, and that is, is that a natural disaster? And are there some differing of opinions of, uh, on this, of whether or not this, <laughs> uh, this would be uh, covered under that? Well, it may surprise you. Most insurance companies think it's not, and most business owners think it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it, as with everything with insurance, and I like to yeah. give the insurance companies a hard time, but um, it really is a matter of contract. You know, you've got this agreement between you and the insurance company, and the question is going to be, what what does the contract say? And does this count? That's kind of the $64,000 question mm-hmm. here. And we're seeing a lot of policies where it does count on. And, and, you know, we've been able to help some folks make claims and get get paid for the business interruption. At the same time, there's quite a few exclusions that might be in a policy or definitions that would prevent it from happening. You know, so if it says it has to be natural disaster, that's where that's an interesting one, because can you can you call this a natural disaster or not? Uh, you know, certainly not a flood, certainly not a tornado or a hurricane, um, but but I think you've got good arguments. And what I've been telling everybody, Roth, is make the claim. Exactly. You know, it ain't going to hurt you to make the claim. Let's find out. And and that's where hopefully we can help you. Um, and we, we've helped a lot of folks, but there's some things we've got to look out for in the policy. And um, just like I, I tell people with your car insurance, if you want to bring your policy by, I'm happy to look at it with you. Um, may, maybe in this day and age, I won't sit in the room with you and look at it, but you can mm-hmm. you can drop it off, and uh, or I'll make myself a copy, and then we can get over the phone and talk about it. Mm-hmm. But some policies actually have um, virus exclusions. Hmm. You know, they they will they will expressly carve out, and and that's going to be obviously if if that's happened, your, your claim is going to be tough. You're really um, tough yeah. And and I think we're going to, you know, start next year. I bet we see that pop up in just about every business policy out there. Um, but some of the, the insurance companies that were more forward thinking about the pandemic, maybe more thinking of flu related one rather mm-hmm. than this. But uh, that's that's why we're seeing it in there. Other ones that sometimes um, are becoming a problem, things like a pollution exclusion, communicable disease exclusion. And, and obviously the insurance companies will get creative and try to, um, you know, see what they can use in the contract language to not have to, to pay out. Well, certainly uh, upon renewal time um, uh, for commercial insurance policies, uh, the uh, business uh, person should, should uh, look at having this policy reviewed by legal counsel to, 
to say, okay, this is in here, may have been in there last year, but this is in here this year. And, uh, you know, what we've been through. Um, and, of course, depending upon timing, we, you know, somebody's policy could renew this summer, and it would be um, very timely to, yeah. to take a look at that, uh, that part of the that That's part right. Of the That's right. And, and there, there may also be some government exclusions in here, you know. Um, it, it, it's not necessarily that the fact of the disease is what's keeping people from being able to open their business as much as it is a government order. You know, the government has come in and said, you're not allowed to be open. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's a lot of little sort of nuanced wrinkles here that we've got to get figured out. Uh, speaking of, of government, um, as they discuss in Washington um, uh, a possible of another stimulus-type situation, one of the things that's being um, um, spoken of by one, one, one party and one side and not the other as much is the fact that the, the uh, limiting the liability exposure of a, of a company as it relates to this. Um, so before that happens, let's talk about that right now. Is there, yeah. some, is there some exposure for uh, businesses out there? Uh, and, and there are some things that they maybe should, um, uh, they should do to try to limit that exposure? You know, this was um, this actually came up when we were back in session, um, and in the discussion we had with folks was okay. Let's say Toyota, for example, they make cars, mm-hmm. but they've got the same kind of equipment because they make air filters that they could maybe make uh, face masks. Yeah. So if if we encourage them to come in the face mask market, do we want to give them limited liability? And, and my argument was, well, wait a minute. Do we want them making them out of used oil filters? Yeah. And everybody's like, well, no, no, no. They have to be reasonable. And I said, right. But if they have to be reasonable, then they really don't have any liability anyhow, because yeah. that's what the law already is. You know, the the law, when you look at the old-fashioned, you know, breach duty, cause and injury elements of, of a negligence claim, taking extraordinary steps in extraordinary times is the reasonable thing to do. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think the call for... Um, limiting liability is probably not needed. I mean, I certainly understand the right. desire. You know, we want people to be out there helping people and, and doing everything we can. But at the same time, we still need people to act like reasonable humans. And yeah. so um, I, I just don't know that it's necessary. And, and what you saw with what Kentucky did, we had an emergency COVID relief bill. We basically said that. Mm-hmm. Look, if you step out of your area, step out of your comfort zone, step out of your industry, and you're helping out, as long as what you're doing is reasonable, fine. It's immunity. Don't worry about it. And so we kind of expressly said what was already the law, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, you don't want me practicing law. I don't have a license or a degree or anything like that. And if you had me doing that, then there certainly would I'd be outside of my bounds and well, right, I'd be in big trouble anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> but but if yeah. Toyota wants yeah. to try to make some uh, HEPA filters or ventilators yeah. or N95s, and you know what? Hey, we're going to cut them a little slack there. As long as they're doing it in a reasonable manner right. and not using used oil filters or something crazy, yeah. then yeah, that, yeah, that that makes perfect sense to me. From the other standpoint, uh, the other side, um, right now, um, most businesses in in our community have on their front door. Uh, a new sign that says uh, requested that you wear a mask or required. Um, right. A business uh, owner has that option. It's not infringing on anybody's constitutional rights if they require you, if they say they require you to have a mask before you can come in there. Is that correct? Maybe. Well, you know, so th- this is getting into a really interesting area. Well, I, didn't, um, I didn't know I was going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting to geeky lawyers. How about that? Everybody else may find this boring. but um, so, so let me back you up a second. The, the reason that sign is up is because the governor has issued an executive order and sort of transferred that decision to the business owner. Okay. Um, now, go back to a day when, there, when there's not a, a pandemic and there's not a mm-hmm. virus. Could a business that's open to the public require you to do or not do certain things before you're allowed to enter the business. Yeah. And it's interesting because, you know, we sort of think about businesses as being private. And so your gut reaction is, well, sure. 
But, but then again, uh, businesses are, in fact, open to the public. And this is where businesses can't discriminate. You know, business yeah. couldn't say, I'm only open to Catholics, yeah. you know, um, even though it's a private business, whereas a church might be able to say that. A, a business couldn't do that. So we start getting into, okay, there are already constitutional issues there that might be bigger than the statutory powers. And now we've got to go back and look and say, okay, well, what power does the governor even have? Mm-hmm. And where does that power come from? Because remember, back to eighth grade civics, you know, our government is a limited government. Mm-hmm. It has the powers we've given it and no more. The rest of those powers are reserved to the people. So KRS 39A.100 is the statutory scheme by which the governor has certain expanded powers during times of emergencies. And, you know, interestingly, Roth, there, there, there is a legitimate question um, about a lot of things that the governor has done and whether or not they are within the statutory powers he was given. Okay. Um, and, and you've seen, for example, I think there have been three or four lawsuits now on the travel ban and the shutting mm-hmm. down the churches and things like right. that, where they've challenged it and he's actually lost. Yeah. Um, so far, every single one of them he's lost. And so I think there's a, a growing question slash frustration out there among people as to hold up what's going on. Mm-hmm. So go back to quarantines for a minute. Could the governor quarantine a person if they have a bad disease, Ebola or something? Of course. But our quarantine has been kind of in reverse. We've, yeah. we've quarantined healthy people, you know, and, and is that something the governor can do? Um, and I think you're going to see that get challenged here before this is all said and done. So that comes back then to, well, all right, can he give business owners the right to require people to wear masks or not? Mm-hmm. Um, and, if, and if so, even if he does have that power statutorily, is that nevertheless a violation of the Constitution? Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tougher call than maybe we all think it is, <laughs> and, and I think it's going to require – court systems to get involved. But I would say this, I, you know, I would hope folks recognize under that whole vein of do what you want to do as long as what you do doesn't hurt others, that, hey, put the mask on. What's it hurt? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's forcing you to. Nobody's requiring to. You, but, but it's the right thing to do. Yeah. If it can help prevent a spread of a disease, go for it. Let's, yeah. let's all be on the same team here. Well, Chad, our, our topic today, Word of the Week, was business interruption insurance. And, and as you and the members of your firm have professed and told us each time, there are a lot of things called fine print on contracts. <laughs> and, and this insurance is a contract between the insurance company and whoever's got the insurance policy. And, um, and, and knowing what that contract is and isn't is vitally important, and we're, we're seeing it uh, right in our face right now with, with a lot of things as it relates to uh, a business that was shut down by order of a governor, of not just of this state, but of other places. Um, right. You know, do they have um, this that they might be, if they have the, that part in, in their policy uh, to fall back on? It is an additional, what do they call them, riders or addendum to most policies. I, I know that we have them here. Um, we d- never in our wildest dreams think of, of, um, this type of situation in the radio world. We have towers that stand up and seem to attract lightning and yeah. tornadoes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and they can sustain lightning many times. Um, it's the tornadoes that, that take some time a while to, to recover from. And, and that's why a lot of people in the radio industry have that, uh, pilot, yeah. have that part, but uh, never in our wildest dreams when we were, adding that to our policy is that I can just, think about a pandemic think right? about and a it, pandemic and, and then not does, sure what one was until and, now. And, and maybe like a business like mine for example we've not been quote unquote shut down right. you know we were deemed essential and allowed to continue to work right. Right. but the reality is we're not meeting with folks and and so you know you have a business slowdown not necessarily a business stoppage yeah. so does the policy still cover that as well and then how do you prove when you get into certain businesses, let's say you're a landscape business. Well, yeah. you know, February is probably not a busy month for you, but yeah. June really is. Yeah. And how do you show how much you've lost 
month to month versus the year before and what is seasonal and what is not. It, you know, like you said, the fine print here, the devil's in the details. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where I would really encourage you to come see us and uh, in, in let's see about making a claim. And then what's it going to cover? Is it going to cover payroll? Is it going to cover net profits? Is it going to cover operating expenses, taxes? Uh, you know, all those sorts of things have got to get figured out. And then one other wrinkle on top of that is would you have any other claims in addition to an insurance claim? And will the insurance company force you to go down those avenues? And, and let me give you the example. Let, let's say um, I'm in a car wreck and I hurt my leg, but then the doctor who's fixing my leg messes it up, and so I've got medical malpractice as well. Now when I'm looking to collect on the for my injury, you've got two potential mm-hmm. people there to go after. And so, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the way this might come up is you go to make a claim on your business interruption insurance, and they say, well, hold up, ha- you have had your constitutional rights violated by the government, <laughs> and we think you need to go there first, you know, um, something like that, looking, looking to force you to go to different avenues of payment. So it, it's a, you know, obviously we're all dealing with it uh, uh, at first blush here. It's new, but there's a ton and ton and ton and ton of work going on with it. And um, it, it's, it's going to be something that I think mm-hmm. just about every business needs to, it's going to be worth your while to look into rather That's than good. shutting your doors. You sure. know? And like I say, some, some businesses um, uh, were able to, um, uh, to be coming under the qualification or classification, as this case, of uh, essential, and uh, there was everybody's businesses were changed. Actually, some of them may have gone up, uh, and yeah. I think we know who we're talking. Uh, but uh, you know, in, in the real world, uh, most everything is down, and uh, but uh, it sure wouldn't hurt to take a take a look. That's right. That's right. 